Hey, by the way, if you haven't already, please click the bell and turn on notifications for the channel. Okay, thanks. Enjoy the video. It was the 1950s. World War II just ended. Millions of people died, but the world was finally at peace. I know we've had our differences, but I think we should put those aside and work together. Yes, comrade. I will gladly be your friend. Yeah, I'm bored of this. You want to start an international war again? A real war would have probably been too expensive for both the US and the Soviets. And considering the USSR lost 15% of its total population in World War II, the only thing they needed a war against right now was their declining birth rate. So they instead decided to stay at home and have a dick measuring contest with powerful nuclear weapons that could destroy the whole world, aka the Cold War. Since they couldn't directly fight each other, both countries had to think of some creative ways to spy and flex their power onto each other. So let's talk about the craziest things that happened during the Cold War. Now spying was a big part of the war. Human spies did the job pretty well, but they had the annoying habit of giving up valuable information when you tortured them. Also, they're pretty easy to spot. So both countries had to come up with new ways of stalking each other. One day, a United States official visited the Soviet Union and was given a wooden plaque as a gift. Oh wow, this is really nice and all, but I clearly remember us being at war with each other. Why are you giving me a gift? Okay, I know we're at war and I know this looks suspicious, but I just wanted to do something nice. But I guess you hate me. It's fine, I'll cry myself to sleep somewhere else. Okay, okay, fine, jeez. I'll take the gift. Do you like it? I mean, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm sure everyone back at home will love it too. Oh, don't worry. I'll be listening. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. Have fun with your gift. Well, surprisingly, the Soviets didn't give the gift to America because they were such good friends, but rather because they wanted to spy on them. The plaque looked normal at first, but had a listening device inside. Unfortunately, this was only discovered in 1951, which meant that for six whole years, the Russians could hear everything that was going on in the US Embassy. The US also had some weird ways to spy on people. In the 1960s, they launched Project Acoustic Kitty. Their plan was to surgically implant microphones into the skull of cats so that it could spy on the Russians. In theory, this was a pretty good idea because most people's reaction when they see a cat is, oh, that's a cute cat, instead of, I know you're a spy, who sent you here? Was it the CIA? Reveal your secrets, feline. They spent around $20 million doing this, and their first test was to drop the cat off at the Soviet embassy to spy on two men. Now the cat, being a cat, wasn't very interested in spying, and instead just wandered off onto a nearby road, where it was immediately hit by a car. The project was abandoned after that, and it was considered a total catastrophe. Thank you, thank you everybody, this is what you subscribe for, this is peak comedy, I'm completely talentless. Now during the Cold War, the US was a very Christian country and they wanted to spread that to the Soviets too. So the US sent 20,000 Bibles to Romania to hopefully make them Christian. Unfortunately, Romania at the time was part of the Soviet Union. And as we all know, the two S's in USSR stand for starvation and shortages. There were a whole bunch of things that Romania needed, but I'm gonna make a guess and say that a story about a man in the sky wasn't very high on that list. And I don't think the starving families of Romania without any basic necessities would appreciate being given books for dinner. So, the Romanians just ground up all the Bibles and reused them as toilet paper. Speaking of toilet paper, it wasn't just the Romanians who were running low on it. Soviet soldiers in battlefields also didn't have any. And so, someone had the bright idea of using classified documents to wipe their ass. Wait, you're gonna throw away secret information? What if somebody finds it? What, you think the Americans are gonna look through human shit to collect used toilet paper? Gentlemen. I need you to look through human shit and collect used toilet paper. So now the poor guy who trained his whole life so he could become an expert spy was now being ordered to sift through garbage bins full of human waste to find the documents that the Soviets used to clean themselves. Sometimes they'd look through hospital bins and find an arm or a leg in the mix and they were ordered to bring those back too, just as an extra fuck you. The United States did get a lot of information from this mission though and it is considered to be one of the most successful spy missions of the Cold War. Just goes to show you that if you want to be successful, you gotta go through a lot of shit. Sometimes literally. The Cold War was a time of great stress for a lot of people. I mean, both the US and the Soviets had nukes, so all it would have took was one bad move to wipe out the entire planet. So what were people supposed to do if the nukes started falling? Well, most people would probably hide in a bunker or in their basement, but I guess Americans looked at kids in school and said, Yeah, we can afford to lose those. 
Students were told that if a nuke was dropped, they were supposed to hide under their tables. Now, contrary to what Hollywood and Indiana Jones might tell you, household objects like refrigerators and tables weren't exactly designed to handle the explosion and radiation of a nuclear weapon. So hiding under the table against a nuke is about as effective as holding a sign that says, please don't hurt me. But to be fair, if a real nuke had dropped, you'd probably be dead before you even thought of getting under anything really. So if nukes were this powerful, the American government must have put the most secure systems on them to prevent them from being used, right? Well, they actually did do that at first, because destroying the whole world would have been pretty bad for the American economy, so I don't think the government would want to do that just yet. All of America's nukes were fitted with a security measure and they could only be used if the person knew a specific code. Most people were happy with this system, except the Air Force commander. Hey, listen, your new system, it's great, it's amazing. But the code is really long. What if I want to launch nukes and I forget it? Well, if you forget it, you could just call us and we'll be there. Yeah, I, I get that. But what if I want to launch them now? You have to wait for us. Come on, man. I just want to launch these deadly nuclear weapons on my own whenever I want to. Is that too much to ask? Yes, yes it is. Listen, these bombs are really dangerous. We're not changing the code. But nothing could get in the way of the Air Force commander and his undying love of highly destructive weapons. So when the security guy left, the commander quietly changed all of the passwords to 8 zeros. And just in case he forgot that password, every soldier was given a checklist with the password on it. So now even the newest soldiers had the power to cause the destruction of the entire world. Which meant that in the 1960s, your grandma's Facebook account filled with pictures of her grandchildren and minion memes had better security than all of America's nuclear bombs. The Russians were also really excited to launch their nukes. During their spying, they noticed that there was a specific building in the middle of the Pentagon that everyone was going to. Why is that building so popular? It must be some sort of secret base for the Americans. What if it's where they make new bombs? It could be where the president lives. Whatever it is, it must be very important to the Americans. We gotta blow it up. Well, as it turns out, the building wasn't a secret base or anything, but it still was one of the most important parts of America. That's right, it was a hot dog stand. The Russians had nukes aimed right at the stand but never actually blew it up. Which was a good thing, because surrounding it was the most important building in America. And nukes aren't exactly known for their accuracy. Lastly, we have one of the biggest and most ridiculous schemes that the US government almost carried out. It was the year 1957, and the Russians just launched the first satellite ever into space. Now since the whole point of the Cold War was for the US and Russia to flex on each other, this was a huge show of power from Russia, and the US had to do something. So the Russians just launched their first satellite into space, and they're planning on sending something to the moon. What are we gonna do? Hey, hey, listen, calm down. You're forgetting what America was built on. You're forgetting what every American believes in. Uh, freedom and equality for everyone? No, of course not. America was built on just one thing. If you got a problem, just blow it up. I'm not sure how that's gonna help us. Remember when Japan was being really annoying? What do we do to them? Bam, problem solved. Thousands of innocent people died. Hell yeah, they did. That's what you call freedom, baby. So if the Russians wanna land on the moon so bad, guess what we're gonna do? Please don't say what I think you're gonna say. That's right. Bam. How are they gonna land on the moon if there is no moon? This is gonna be horrible for everyone. Millions of people are gonna die. Yeah, I know all that, but it's gonna be fucking sick. The United States seriously considered blowing up the moon just to show the Russians that they had the power to. Which is kinda like showing off how strong you are by strangling random people on the street until they die. Sure, you get your point across. But there are probably other ways to do it that have a lower mortality rate. Luckily, the US stopped the plan before it was actually carried out. But you gotta admit, despite the risk of everyone dying, it would have looked pretty fucking sick. So yeah, those are some of the weirdest plans, schemes and inventions from the Cold War. Since you've made it this far, here's a bonus fact. During the war, the CIA were trying to come up with new ways to spy on the Russians. And then came along this guy who claimed that he could bend spoons with his mind. Now most of us would probably see that and say, yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. And go back to whatever we were doing. But the CIA were really desperate for ideas at this point, and so they spent the next 25 years researching into psychics. This included things like remote viewing, where you could see something happen far away, and even the power to kill things with your mind. As you can probably guess, this was a complete failure and the government got nothing out of it. Or it could have been a success and the government is just hiding an army of superhuman psychics until they take over the world. But I think I'll go with the first option. Anyway, 
like the video if you liked it, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment and check out some other videos in the description. I'll see you guys later. I got bad.